Hey friends, welcome to my happy little art studio. I hope you're having a great day. It is a beautiful fall day here and the leaves are starting to turn, the air is cool and the sky is blue. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the fall weather. Plus it keeps my studio cooler, which I really love. Today I wanna paint a really fun, simple pumpkin for fall. I think you'll like it. Um, I think I'm gonna try to paint it even more simple than this traceable. Leave out some of the lines in the pumpkin. Um, I'm really excited to do it and it's a nice change. I'm gonna paint it eight by eight inches. This guy behind me, or th these guys behind me, is a 30 by 40 inch canvas, which I'm just about done with. I finished adding white. I think this is Max on here. The painting is called Mavis in the Middle. <laughs> Emily and I just, it just makes us chuckle. Emily's uh, my favorite daughter who helps me with the lives and all the editing and the thumbnails. She just does an ama amazing job. Um, I've been, I think, Mavis's face is done because I've added like I've added whiskers to Max here. Mavis does need some whiskers, but I've got to work on the body. Is this one gonna be Malcolm? Maybe we gotta have M names. I've got to work on this body, and I'm I'm not done working on Mavis's body. And then lastly, I'll add some whites to Malcolm back here. Anyway, it's almost done. The video will probably post right after this one or right before this one. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> Let's take a look at what I'm thinking. I've got an eight by eight inch canvas panel from Michaels. I'm just gonna draw that. that. This is a charcoal pencil. Just kind of close that line because sometimes when I'm painting, I lose track of where I am. Um, gosh, I think you get five of them for seven and a half dollars. So, you know, it's a little over a dollar a piece, but it's pretty inexpensive. I think we're gonna make this a budget painting. We'll have to put budget or painting for not much money on, in the video title or something. I wrote the word love on the pumpkin with some watercolor pencils from Michaels. It's just a great way to start. Oh, I'm missing a couple. I wonder where I put them. <laughs> it's a great way to start. Any color pencil, watercolor pencil will work. I'm gonna say that again, watercolor pencil, because you want to dissolve into the paint. And then I decided it would be quicker because my pumpkin reference photo here, I'm gonna show it on my iPad. Um, yellows and oranges are quite transparent colors. Actually, some of these greens are gonna be quite transparent too. So I could do the whole background because that could be easier um, than not having to have to paint around the pumpkin in the fence post. Um, but I'm thinking it'll be quicker to do it this way. Sometimes I do paint the whole background and then paint the image over it. But I'm thinking this time I'm gonna paint the background around my image. Hopefully that looked okay on video. Oh, oh, sorry you guys, I just bumped my video arm with my iPad. And then I thought, you know, I've just been really having fun with quinacridone magenta. Um, I need to get another tube. So let's use that. It's just such a wonderful color to mix with. I really like it. And then cad yellow, a uh, cadmium free yellow medium. You can get whatever, use whatever brand you like. I like Li Liquitex because they can just stand right on a shelf. And then I just pulled out, I've got a couple different blues. I pulled out Thalo Blue Green Shade. It's one of my favorite blues, but any blue would work. And then I mixed so you saw me in the time lapse, I mixed some green puddles for the background. And in order to get, so I pretty much mixed that color and pulled it over here, added some blue and it was looking a little too blue green. I wanted it more muted, so I put some magenta in it. So I'm pretty much working with primaries, not literally, but pretty close. And then I have titanium white. Okay guys, and I think, so we're gonna do a bokeh, B-O-K-E-H effect, like in photography where you have the, I got a little paint on my brush. Well, here, I'll just 
kind of where you have kind of the circles that show up in the background, sort of just like blurry camera things. Things, I don't know how to describe it. So I'm gonna use uh, Filbert number 12 Royal Lang Nickel from their Mental Mine. Uh, you could use a bigger brush. I was thinking the lower brush might be easier to get in here. Okay, we're gonna time lapse and then I'll be back in a bit. Hey friends, a couple thoughts. So I um, got a little bit of the green over on my pumpkin and I just took a clean brush and some water and just kind of clean that up a little bit. Just because the dark green could be hard to cover on the pumpkin. You could put white over it too if you needed to. Um, the colors are quite transparent and going on thin. So, which if you like it, like there I'm getting the canvas sort of as the paint shrinks and you get little white specks of the canvas showing through. Um, if you like this look, it kind of looks like watercolor, go for it. But I think what I'm gonna do now after I see how the paint's going on, oh, and then I put this down just to lift it up so I could paint the edges. That actually might be a tip. Um, I think what I'm gonna do for a second layer is just paint some shapes and not worry too much about the circle bokeh effect. And then I'll come back maybe with some matte medium and some yellow. So I'm just gonna paint maybe some just areas of color and then come back and see if I can get some of the circles a little bit better. Okay, just wanted to pop in and let you know what I was thinking. Hey, looking better, don't you think? Of course, you know, if you like the, the first one layer, do that. I think I still need, I need another layer in a couple of spots. Just depends on the paint. All the paints I'm using, um, all the paints actually have a little transparency, even the titanium white. But when you, um, you might notice, here, let me, let me grab my palette again here. You might notice that this one I put a little white in. I put more yellow in it and more and some white in it, and it covers better than these, than the ones mixed straight out of the tube. Um, blues, you never know. Blues can be quite transparent. It just depends. But yeah, I think I'm gonna put another coat on. It's getting there. I think the three coats are doing the trick. Give you a closer look. I'm not seeing where the paint has shrunk and is showing the white canvas. And then I mixed a couple, I mixed a little bit more of this lighter yellow green and I mixed a little bit greener, lighter green. I think I'm about some matte medium. I don't know if I need it. Cause I've already got a little bokeh, the circle effect going just from the brush strokes. Oh, and then you don't want to shake it, but I always kind of swirl it a little bit. Oh, sorry, it's probably loud. It kind of glues itself shut sometimes. So I guess we'll put it maybe right here. Okay, so let's take A little matte medium and a little of our light green. Make sure I'm on camera. Let's just see. So 
So what can happen is if you get too much moisture or too, it isn't happening for me right now, but I just got my brush wet to kind of lighten some of that up a little. Um, you can lift up the background because I only dried it for a few minutes with a hair dryer. I like it. You know, we could do, um, let's do a straight up white. Oh, I've got a cat here on my palette. Anybody have pets out there? <laughs> Leave a comment. I just took Freckles to the vet today because she had some mats. I mean, she's never had mats so bad. Usually I can brush them out. She's a medium long hair tortie. And so they shaved her just where the mats are. So she's looking a little funny. So matte, medium, and white here. Speaking of mats. Oh, she's going to want out of my studio and I have the door shut. We'll see if she starts meowing. Now that may be more. So I offloaded some paint. That's scaring me a little bit. So now I've cleaned out my brush with a little bit of water. And then what I might do is Okay, right, let's just see how it dries. Okay, I'll be back in a bit, guys. I'm gonna let Freckles out of my studio. Hey, so essentially what we're doing is making bubbles. <laughs> I think it looks really fun. So if you're painting the jellyfish painting that I have with a traceable, you know, it's, you can paint bubbles on there. Oh, and then I did kind of like um, sort of lightening it up a little bit with my fingers sometimes. On a couple of them, I put a little indication of a highlight. I think that looks pretty good. So now what I think I'm going to do is mix an orange and uh, maybe work on the stem a little bit and then we'll stop for the live this Wednesday, October 13th, 2021, if you want to go catch the live, but not just yet. I'm going to mix an orange and I think we'll paint the stem. Hey, I thought I'd pop in and let you know what I'm thinking. So this is almost straight up a little quinacridone, whoops, get that in frame, a little quinacridone and cad yellow medium hue. Um, it was a little dirty, because this is a little dirty. I put a little blue in it to mute it down. Um, and now, can you see that that's starting to go towards brown? You can mix a brown with these colors. This green is kind of green-brown. You just keep playing with it. Um, but really, what I wasn't planning on doing, but what I am doing, is mixing some oranges for my pumpkin. Because <laughs> I'm just interested in seeing what the color is going to do. Now that's getting quite red. But that could work. Especially when I, if I paint from the three piles kind of a situation. And then what I was going to say is um, put out a burnt umber if you don't want to spend all the time mixing a brown. And then I think I'm going to put out a pinch of black. Well, here, let me, um, let me mix this a little bit and I'll pop back in and we'll mix a uh, brown with black and orange. Okay, I mixed quite a light orange. I didn't mute it down, but you could. Um, but I don't think I'm going to need to. And then I'm going to grab just a little bit. Oh, was that off camera? Just a little bit of black. That might be too much. I could put black on my palette. Oh, I don't know if you just heard Freckles. She wants to back out. 
Well, let's make it a green. You never know. Um, usually I have cad yellow medium and I notice the hue is a little lighter in, in color. Oh, my power just flickered. <laughs> um, hopefully that won't happen again. So let's see if we can get this to go brown. I may scrape this off and put a burnt umber out. That was funny. Okay, I'm going to go back to the time lapse while I play making a brown here. Well, what do you think of my brown? Here. I can probably show you maybe on the white paper towel. It's a pretty nice dark brown. <laughs> um, I think it's easier to mix an orange. Um, and I didn't really know with the quinacridone uh, which orange I would want, or yeah, how much of an orange or a yellow I'd want. When it went green on me, when I um, added a little bit of black, I knew I needed more quinacridone. But even if you didn't know and you added more yellow and went greener, you're like, oh, add more of the quinacridone, you know, and then I just kept adding more and more black. I have a nice chocolate brown there. That's pretty fun. I'm going to spray my paints here. It's starting to get hot and dry in my studio. Okay, let's paint the stem and then we're probably going to stop. I'll let you know when we're stopping for the live. Okay, friends, here's where you're going to want to pop over to the live if you want to see me paint the pumpkin in real time. Um, I will definitely put more detail on the stem. I don't want to get too far along and irritate the people who come to see the live. I'll probably take a palette knife maybe when I get towards the end and um, maybe a small one because it's not a very big pumpkin and put in like some white highlights, maybe some rougher browns. I mixed a little blue in the brown. It almost looks kind of greenish, but then here it ends up looking black when it dries. Okay. I super appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will catch you right back here after the live. If you came from the live we just did on October 13th, 2021, I painted with a larger brush. Oh, I, it's, I've got it in the other room. It's about, it's a flat brush. This is an angle, but it was that wide. Just some color of the pumpkin, some values, not a lot of stuff. And now, oh, and then I mixed even more oranges with some quinacridone. These are what I would call out of the tube oranges. These are more muted. I muted them with just a little hint of the phthalo blue green shade. And I'm just swiping really in shadows and more highlights. And I think it's really starting to look much better and more fun. I might be done with the pumpkin. I'm gonna work on the, <laughs> I 
I stop every time because it's, it's got to be a fence post. Um, I just don't know what to call it because it's kind of wide. Of course, I don't know. That could be This could be a, a much little, littler pumpkin than I think it is. So I always kind of hesitate on what to call that. So I'm going to work on this. I've got it. Oh, gosh. So here's one reason why not to have a bunch of colors on your palette. Because I keep dragging my brush through. Because I'm, I'm talking, I'm looking at my reference photo, and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing with my brush. Um, normally, eh, for this one, I might or might not have two palettes. But since I've got so many puddles going, I would probably have an orange palette and then... Or even maybe a background palette and just set it aside and then start a new palette. Um, of course, do what works for you. You may be a much neater painter and don't have that problem. Okay. I think I want to lighten this up. I don't know if it dried darker on me. So I painted in some of the cracks and then I'm painting in some of the the lighter areas and mostly I'm just getting paint down and some values down so I can see what I think. That's rather thin. I misted my paints after the live and sometimes I'm a little too heavy with the mister. So if you get too much water in your paints, it can, the, people say it can crack. Um, I don't, I, I, what I'm umming about is it's in the pottery business they'd call it crazing or just kind of shears off, breaks off. I don't think that happens quite that bad with acrylic paints. And I also think, so there's, this is a pre gesso board, so there's something for the acrylic to grab onto. And then I'm going to, when this is done, I'll put a gel gloss isolation layer. Uh, I've got, I've actually got Liquitex gel gloss in this golden container. And it, you need to read because I think the Liquitex, oh, it's not going to stay on here. I think the golden you can mix three parts glass to one part water. But I think the Liquitex, it's uh, four parts glass to one, point wa one part water. So I have it already a little thinned out. I stirred it up and then I just paint that over my entire painting once it's been dry for a couple days. And I think it... It seals up any th thin layers I have because acrylic paint likes to stick to each other. Um, sort of glues it all back together, for lack of a better way to describe it. It also gives it some depth, I think. I think it makes, the gloss really makes the colors look yummy. And then once that gel gloss isolation layer is dry, I put on, uh, usually satin varnish, varnish is what most people like. I use the permanent satin varnish and I have a varnish video if you want to see how I do that. Oh, and then don't like shake it. You don't want bubbles in it. Just kind of gently stir it a little bit before you use it. Okay, I got off track there. <laughs> I think because I paint better when I'm not trying to talk and entertain. I didn't really like that, so I just smeared it out with my finger. I think I'm going to go back to the time lapse and then I'll be back in a bit. thought I'd pop in and just mention that things are getting better looking. Just layers really help. And I, I may pull out the palette knife here and get some more texture. And I like that I have little hints of orange. This is actually starting to look pink, which is funny how that happens. But color is relative, so it all relates to what's around it and it can, it can actually change how it looks, which is pretty cool. And sometimes surprises that you don't like. Okay, I think I just wanted to say that. I don't know that there's anything else. Whoops. I also kind of like, I'm kind of hinting at a little reflective color from the pumpkin here. The light's coming pretty much 
Well, maybe from this direction. Maybe kind of top and to the left. Because most of this is in shadow right in front of us. And then some of the stuff I do will may disappear. That happens to me sometimes. As I go in and I refine the shadow. Okay, guys, I'll be back in a bit. Hey, so I've got something interesting going on. I've kind of got different techniques. This is quite smooth and blended, and this is quite rough, and it's getting, getting, taking a lot of shape. I like it. I don't mind the rough texture on the stem. So what I'm thinking is, do I need to try and roughen the pumpkin up? Do I need to come back and smooth out. I don't know how many times I put some of these cracks and lines in. <laughs> um, I just like to do it because then I, I remember them. I don't know if I need to like smooth out this. You know what? I'm going to take a photo and then I'll be back. Okay. I took a photo with my phone which, hel which helps me step back from the painting. Um, and it looks, I really liked it in the photo. So, and then this is quite smooth and blurry. So we've kind of got some interesting uh, uh, contrast going on here. I think what I'm going to do is smooth this down, which it doesn't need in the video. Here, did I already show you? I think I did. Because the video smooths it out and the photo smooths it out a little bit. So I'm going to smooth this out and then I think we'll be done. I added some more highlights and a little bit more detail and I just lightened up that a little bit, which I don't know if I like it as well. It's kind of funny. Um, sometimes you do it because it's in the reference photo and then sometimes you're like, oh, maybe not. And I haven't used black. The darks are blue, some sort of dirty blue. I'm trying to go kind of slow here because I, I lightened that right here, and then I darkened it back a little bit more. There, I think that's a little better. The one thing I kind of want is some pop on the pumpkin, and I'm not <laughs> knocking things over here. I'm not really getting it, so let's, I'm thinking of it. That's just my, all my paints are drying too. It's a beautiful fall day here in Omaha, but it's much drier weather. Kind of used to the summer air. I don't, because I don't want to draw the lines, but maybe we could get a little. There, that way our pumpkin has a little more punch. We'll see what we think of that tomorrow or when I take a photo and then I think I'm going to smooth this out and I'll probably be back to say goodbye.
hey friends let's chat a bit so this is the next day and I was I'm aiming towards a little softer pumpkin which I got it's beautiful I love that it glows the colors are awesome and I put in quite a bit of texture in this uh, fence post and then I took out and smoothed out some of the texture with a flat brush because I thought it was fighting too much and I think what it is is I need a little a few grooves in the pumpkin because it has a, a more of an apple feel than a pumpkin feel I might be overthinking this which happens a lot in art overthinking is quite common uh, the video smooths it out even when I hold it up there but when I had more texture in there with the palette knife painting that I was doing I think it was just too much compared to the smooth pumpkin it was calling too much attention although what's really helping me is you can't help but see that that orange even though I didn't use um, straight out of the tube quinacridone and cad yellow to make the orange well I did to make the orange but I muted it down a little bit with some of the phthalo blue green shade I did come over it with some straight up which I think I already mentioned just in case I didn't this pot this puddle and this puddle is straight up out of the tube quinacridone and cad yellow and then it it's such a nice transparent color that it glazes and I'm loving that's one thing about mixing with quinacridone rather than using red out of the tube is I think you get you can get more glazing and, and a little bit richer color I might be crazy though I'm not I don't know that that's a fact that just might be what I think you know okay so I'm gonna put some grooves in this pumpkin and see what I think um, it is fun how realistic looking it gets especially when you step back from it let's see let me get even closer when you get closer you can see the colors and all the textures I don't think it looks quite so realistic oh here's a tip before I forget so sometimes my cracks are actually white and then I, I did have I kind of lost the dark but I did have a dark crack line next to a white and that also helps it make it a little bit more realistic I kind of have one there okay guys let's put some grooves in ribs in for lack of a better word and see what we think I wish you guys were here so I could see what you think <laughs> or hear what you think I think I'm done I think some of the I didn't put in all here let's get the reference photo I didn't put in all the lines which I like better it makes it sort of rounder happier I don't know gives it a little smoother feel which I like I didn't I was gonna put in some of these spots and I didn't but I did put in one maybe a couple but I think the lines are helping a little bit it helps just make sure you have more attention on the pumpkin I totally may be overthinking it you guys can let me know in the comments what you think it's really fun I really like the colors I got with this um, if you give it a try let me know thanks for hanging out with me thank you thank you for all your support I can't tell you how much it means to me great big happy art hugs and I hope to chat with you soon bye guys